Well, welcome to our webinar today. Thank you for your patience. We had a little bit of technical difficulty, so we're gonna wing it. And we've been doing this for quite some time. Uh, I'm 20 years in, Julia Billen. Uh, my sidekick here is Scotty, 11 years 11. in. So I think he's qualified to wing it. Uh, you know, there was that whole Y2K thing where everybody was so concerned about right. the year 2000 and, you know, the, all of the glitches. Nothing <laughs> happened. 2020 hits. Yep, it's done. Everything's gone wrong. <laughs> but we're here. We're happy you're here as well. Uh, today, it's called Ask the Experts, and you're in really good hands. This guy is our technical support expert and uh, Santa Claus lookalike. Mm -hmm. Tis the season. Oh, ho, ho. So what we thought we would do today is just take some time out and go over our two main product lines, our indoor electric floor heating and our outdoor snow melt and de-icing. Uh, we've been doing both of these products for quite some time. I started the industry in the industry 20 years ago with indoor products, electric floor heating. And then in 2005, we launched our snow melt and de-icing business. And that has been growing like wildfire. So we're happy you're here. Let's use our website. We did have a presentation for you. We'll be sending that to you guys later. But for today, we're going to just walk you through the website so you can, one, see how great it is. And then two, we can just introduce you product by product. Mm -hmm. What are we going to talk about today, Scotty? Well, we're going to be glancing down a little bit more than we normally do <laughs> because we fortunately have a very good person that runs all these, Olivia, and she is always well prepared. So we have our good old fashioned backup. Yeah. So uh, she's the, the gal that sits over there. So thank you, Olivia, for all your hard work. The first thing we're going to be talking about is the temp zone floor heating system. Right. So let's start with the temp zone. We can break it down into uh, a couple of categories. The first thing that we want to talk about is our temp, temp zone flex roll. This is our flagship product. Uh, as you can see, you have a 360 view of that product. It comes in a row, roll format, mm -hmm. and this is used under tile stone applications predominantly. Right. So um, as you can see, uh, Scott is bringing up the entire temp zone line for you. We start with the left, our flex uh, roll, and then we go over to our cable. Uh, and that, these are the two most popular products. Scott, uh, talk about when you would use a roll versus a cable. Because if I'm just looking at these products, I'm thinking, well, I just want, I want warm feet, right. basically. Right. Uh, so all of these products, once they go in, they do the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, but when would you use a roll versus a cable? A roll is a, is a really long spool of, of wire that's pre-attached yes. to a fiberglass mesh. So the spacing is always done for you. All you do is just lay it out, and cut it and turn it and fill rectangular spaces are very easy to fill with that project product. You just lay it out, cut it, turn it and rotate it around. Okay. This product is more flexible. It can be um, done with uh, some strips um, that kind of make it look like this. So you can do this kind of installation. Right, which... so, so talk to me about this. So one, you the the heating element is on a fiberglass mesh, and the mesh is kind of like the carrier, right? Right, which and you're keeps just, the spacing done. And and you're keeping, you're just cutting that mesh. Mm -hmm. Never the heating element. Right, right. Never. You're, the... you're learning well. <laughs> that's usually my line. So 20, 20 years. <laughs> I finally got your line. Uh, so that's that's the first one, and then the second one, it actually needs a carrier. Yeah, right? something just, to hold it in place. It's just a cable. Right. All right. right. So there are two ways to hold it in place. One is with what we call fixing strips. And I think that's what we're looking at here. Right. And that's the least expensive way to do it. So this is for those who have uh, are more budget conscious mm -hmm. and they have uh, they have some time because it is a bit more time consuming. Right. All right. And then the second way to do this is what you've brought up now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is with Prodesso. And that's an installation membrane. It has some other properties that are really great uh, for tile uh, installs as well. So tell me uh, about the two. When would you use one versus the other? Back to the same question. Well, some some companies would like to tell you that every single floor requires a um, uncoupling membrane, but it right. doesn't. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have a really solid floor that's in really good condition mm -hmm. um, and you're getting by on a budget, then this is the way to go because you don't have to buy a membrane to cover the entire floor. 
plus the cable. Right. You just buy the strips and put them along the perimeter of the room, and then you manually run the cable back and forth through the strips. And I will tell you that in general, the uh, most of these products, the, the the sweet spot is a master bathroom. Mm -hmm. So you, you're really looking at a master bathroom. You're usually on the second floor, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and the average square footage that we warm is about 45 square feet. So it's not normally a large area. Uh, we do do kitchens. We do great rooms and basements. Those right. get into much larger areas. But for these smaller areas, a fixing strip um, solution like this is not terribly labor intensive. Right. And it lets you fill irregular spaces, too. Mm -hmm. So if you've got walls that jut out and go back and forth. It's much easier to do it with this than to do cuts and turns with the other product, mm -hmm. lay it out, take the cable off the mesh to fill the other areas. This is much, much faster than that type of product. Okay. If you have a really solid floor that doesn't need any reinforcing or anything like that, it's nice and solid. It's got good spacing on the rafters below. Um, then you don't have to worry about the floor bouncing. But what this product does is this product will isolate the subfloor from the tile. So if yes. the subfloor moves, the tile stays still. It's called an isolating mem isolation membrane. Because if the tile moves, you then get you get the cracking or, right. and, or lippage, I mm -hmm. think it's called, and not so great. Right. So what you want to do is you have a floor that's suspect. It'll allow you to put this between the tile and the subfloor, mm -hmm. and then that will allow the subfloor to move and the tile to stay in place and not crack or not do any damage to the grout lines. And the cable has a certain amount of tensile uh, strength that's even tested by UL, United Labs. And mm -hmm. uh, so, it, you know, they actually put these cables through some rigorous testing to make Stretch sure make sure they it can yeah. withstand any of that flexing, if you will. Right. Yeah. And the good thing about both of these products is they're wet location listed in the U.S. and Canada, mm -hmm. which means they can go directly in the shower without any problem. So um, it, whether you buy it on the mesh and do cuts and turns, or if you buy our shower mats that mm -hmm. sit in a shower, or if you buy the cable on um, in a loose cable situation like this, then they all can go in a wet location, which all is right. actually like a shower. I, and I think you've done a really great job of kind of talking about that. We have, uh, you know, the roll, we have the cable product, um, larger areas, better for the roll, smaller areas, and more when you need more flexibility, maybe that's a better cable solution. Mm -hmm. Budget would, would be cable versus uh, cable with strips. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, if, if you're worried about floor issues or flexing, uh, you don't maybe have the best subfloor. Um, you want to uh, do something like the Prodesso uncoupling membrane. Right. Now, we do have a question. Where do I see the question? Okay. How are you supposed to come out thin set? Uh, how are you supposed to uh, put the thin set over the cables? Uh, is it a, it, it's a great approach, but any, in, but any way to easily address the added height this adds. Yeah, you definitely need to address the added height. There are two ways that you can, uh, you can, you, you can do an adhesive. One is with self-leveling, mm -hmm. uh, which is the preferred uh, method, in my opinion, uh, just because if for whatever reason um, you need to uh, you need to do a repair to your final flooring surface. Let's say you have to repair a tile. You don't, uh, because the heating element is embedded, encased, if you will, in self-leveling, you don't really have to worry about hitting, hitting that, that heating element. And then once you hit the heating element, going in and repairing it is a whole nother song and dance. So I always recommend self-leveling. It is the most expensive way to do it, and it will require more additional height than other techniques. The second technique is uh, to embed it in the same adhesive as the self-leveling, uh, and that is with a modified thin set. There, you're usually putting your tile in about a quarter inch, and you're literally going to first put the heating element on the subfloor, and then you can do a one or two step application. You can simply skim coat over the heating element, let it dry, mm -hmm. come back if you're doing a fixing strip, and then trial over it three, three eighth inch. And you're gonna have to take that into consideration anyway, if you're uh, in a, a uh, retrofit and you're installing tile, you're gonna need to take that floor height into consideration. You're gonna need to take those thresholds into consideration. Anything else you want to add to that question? Excellent question. If you use the spool, I mean, if you use the product on mesh, it's actually a little bit thinner 
Mm -hmm. uh, it really only adds about a 16th of an inch to your floor height. That's true. So if you are really concerned about floor height, you um, the, the cable on that mesh is really only about a 16th of an inch thick. Mm -hmm. So um, if you're worried about height of the floor, then you probably want to go with the roll, the cut and turn roll, because mm -hmm. then you don't have to worry about the five millimeter height of this product. But really, this product is going to be is embedded in the thin set you're already putting down. Exactly. So in reality, you're only adding really over a sixteenth of an inch, uh, or so. It depends on how thick your thin set is, or if you're doing late uh, um, self leveling or or thin set. But if you really are concerned about the additional height, you probably want to go uh, back here, and you probably want to look at the temp zone rolls yeah. because they are really really thin. Yeah, and that you know that's a great question because I really did not think to take that into consideration. I'm always looking at well, how large is the area, uh, how much flexibility do I need? Um, so uh, height is 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 perfect. Uh, our product. The next question is coming from Linda, and is our product suitable for LVT for uh, luxury vinyl tile? Great question. I'm going to tell you, Linda, very, every time we do a webinar on LVT, we get tremendous, a tremendous response. And so that means consumers are really loving those products. They want to install them in their homes. And we've done it. We have videos that show how to do it. It, it comes out beautifully. And it goes back to that, that install method that I told you is my preferred method. In order to install luxury vinyl tile, you have to have a very smooth final surface to adhere that to any method that you're using. Uh, and so that means self-leveling cement. And we do have videos online that speak directly to how to do that. Very popular and in very much in demand for uh, electric floor heating going under that flooring surface. Right. So the, the great video we have shows you exactly how to do it. Um, and that's kind of why I'm, I'm kind of glad we we lost our presentation <laughs> because we never I mean, we we're, we're never around. able to show you where the videos are. Um, and we have a whole bunch of videos on there. And here's a video that shows you exactly how to do that. Yeah. So hopefully that will answer your question. Once you watch that video, you can just click on there. We have all kinds of video with all different kinds of products. So even if we don't come back here, here's how how the, um, the different products are installed. Um, so this is a great, great page you may not be aware of. It's under the Explore tab and then it's under Videos. Yeah. So check that out. And then we'll go back to where we were. But I just wanted to make sure that everybody saw that because we have a video that answers your question exactly. So great question. Thank you, Linda. So uh, to go back to our Temp Zone products, indoor electric floor heating, we've introduced you to our roll product. We've introduced you to our cable product, which can be installed two ways, fixing strips or an install membrane. Uh, but we also have what we call um, easy mats. Those are used for spot heating. So if you really are just uh, looking for a rectangle in front of your bathtub, mm -hmm. for example, you just need a three by five area spot heating. We have products that do just that. They're called easy mats and they're called easy for a reason. No cutting, no turning. You actually just take the product, you plop it down, thin set over it and you're done. Yep, and the other one we have to talk about is the Temp Zone Custom Mat. Now, this is a great product. Mm -hmm. I love this product. If you have a customer or you are that customer, and I'm that customer, which is you, you're very concerned about fit. You want to make sure that uh, nothing also is going to happen during install to damage the heating element. Because most of the time when damage occurs, it happens because someone cuts the heating element or accidentally nicks it. But if you do the custom mat, you can have it designed to your specifications so that there's no cutting that needs to be done. Right, you just roll it out, lay it down, and you're ready to go. And it's another kind of easy mat solution, but customized not just to a three by five, but your actual shape of your room. So something like a bathroom, for example, the product doesn't, it only goes in the walking area. Mm -hmm. So not under the vanity, not under the toilet, not under the shower, uh, you know, none of those major fixtures. You So we will design it around all of that. It fits your room perfectly if your measurements are, right. are right. Uh, and so make sure before you press the order button or you talk to your account rep that you find that you have finalized the, the, the dimensions 100%. Uh, and, and that is a really great product for you when you want to make sure that there, nothing can really go wrong 
on site. I mean, something can always go wrong, right. but you really reduce the risk. Two things about this product is they install in a different way than the than the mesh product. Does. It really does. Yeah. Uh, you put the thin set down on the subfloor and then you push it down into that. Always. And then a, you cover it with thin set again. It's always a two step method. Yeah. So that's one thing to take into consideration. And it is also not. Uh, this is not designed to go in wet locations. This is so you can put not, all the all the other stuff we talked about goes in the shower. This particular product goes in the bathroom, but not, not in, in the, the shower. shower. Yeah, good point. All right, let's back up. So we've got the custom for just full free. Mm -hmm. uh, not that you're a fool. Yeah, yeah. Even I can put it in. <laughs> uh, we've got easy mats for spot heating and then flex rolls and cable. Uh, just to, so that you have uh, some e easy, flexible ways to install or and budget conscious ways as well. And you can also have a solution for if you need to kind of shore up that floor. Right. Um, anything else we should talk about here? Let me just share this. Okay. We're the experts. So we have an account rep for everyone uh, that we do and uh, that we uh, have an opportunity for. We decide with you which of these products is best going to suit your application. I've been doing this 20 years. I don't expect someone to walk in and know, oh, yeah, I want the custom mat versus the yeah. roll. You tell us what's going to be the floor surface yeah. and what the subfloor is, and we'll let you know what goes in the middle. Absolutely. Like Absolutely. And the other thing that you should be aware of is for every opportunity, and I'm not talking about a sale, I'm talking about every quote, every discussion that we have about your project, we do what we call a smart plan. And that is because we want to show you the exact coverage that you're going to get uh, when, when you install the product. It's a really great tool for one, because we need measurements, so we need you to send a floor plan. So it's a really great tool for us to discuss uh, what's in the room? What do we need to work around? Are there floor vents? Um, do we uh, have a double vanity versus a single vanity? Uh, we want to kind of talk through those things. Uh, we also want to talk through um, where the door is, where a thermostat is going to be located. If there's any air vents in the floor, right. any support posts, right. anything that would take away the available square footage of the floor, yeah. we would need to know about because obviously we're going to be heating that floor. So we need to know what the square footage is in that area that we're heating. So we want to know the terrain. Uh, so that's why we collect that information. And then we uh, take that and we give you a smart plan. And that is your plan. It's your plan to decide uh, where you want coverage, where you don't want coverage. It's a tool to use with your customer to say, okay, everywhere you see this cable or this row, that is where your feet is going to be warm. This area over here, not going to be warm. How do you feel about that? And it's a great way to kind of engage your customer. And it's a great way for you to kind of think about where do you really want warmth on your feet? Right. The one thing that a lot of people, some people when they order product, they've never done it before. Yeah. They say, uh, I'm just going to order a square and put it in the center of the floor and that'll heat the whole room. Right. Right. Where there's heating cable, there's warmth and where there isn't, there isn't. So yeah. you have to keep that in mind. If you want an area inside that room to be warm, it actually has to have electric cable under it. Yeah. And I, I think that's a great tip because many people do think, well, it, the heating uh, is the, it's radiant. So it's going to spread out this way. Well, it doesn't spread out horizontally. Right. It kind of spreads out vertically 360 degrees and starts to radiate into the warm, into the room, warm your floor, and then ultimately warm the objects in the room, including you. Right. Yeah. So we have a question here uh, when I'm going to start answering. When using this product in wet areas and after the mat is embedded in the self-leveling mortar, do you have to paint a membrane over the embedded product? Only if the room needs it. Yeah. You don't have to, uh, the, all the other product, the, the custom product, yes. But the other product we we're talking about does not need that unless yeah. your room needs to be waterproof. And we also have other ways to waterproof it too, which may be easier using um the Prodesso system and the waterproof bands. Uh, that's we we do a lot of walk-in uh, showers without any curbs. Yeah. Uh, curbless showers are done by waterproofing the entire room, and the entire room can be waterproofed by putting the Prodesso down, putting the cable in the Prodesso. We have a video for this, and <laughs> then covering it and doing the bands around the room. So you're making the room kind of like a bowl. Yeah. So the water has nowhere to go but to stay in that bowl. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that answers your question. It our cable 
of uh, the, the, the custom product does. So to answer your question, yes, for custom, no, for the other products. Right. Um, great question. Um, the other thing that uh, folks are interested in is, uh, should a product be installed over con uh, concrete prior to installing the floor heating to keep the heat uh, moving up and uh, not lose it into the concrete slab? Absolutely. We do have a product. There are two ways you can go about this. So we do have a product for uh, slab heating. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you're doing, you want to go back to um, floor heating. Uh, and then if you go to concrete, excellent. And then you come down, you can see we do have a product that goes in the slab. Again, either a roll or a cable. So the, 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 there is the ability to do it in the slab. Now, uh, for a new addition, that might make some sense. Uh, warmer climate, that might make some, some sense. Uh, but if you're here in Illinois, like we are, um, the, um, another alternative to that is put in the concrete slab. Since the heating element only needs to go into about a quarter inch of adhesive of thin set, um, we would recommend that you first put a, uh, a barrier, a break. Well, there's two, sorts. yeah, there's two ways to think about it. Do you want to heat all that thermal mass of a gigantic slab that's so many feet by so many inches deep? The fastest, most responsive way to heat that area would be to put a heat on top in a very thin layer. Yeah. And what we want to do when we install the product in a thin layer above the slab is to isolate the heat from the slab so the heat is not pulled down. Because if you put a cable directly on top of a slab and put tile over the top, all the heat's going to be drugged down. So if you look at the, the screen that we're showing you right here, we're gonna show you the very first product. Let's go down uh, and show them Sarasorb. So Sarasorb on the left is our go-to product that we recommend always having that installed over a concrete slab. Um, we, um, we will size it for you. Um, we always recommend it even in warmer climates just because it will make the uh, product heat up faster. It will be energy efficient as you, as you were alluding to. So Sarasorb is a, definitely a product that we recommend. We have another, we have a cork product as well, but the Sarasorb has a higher R, um, um, uh, IR, um, R value. I are <laughs> intelligent resources. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It has a, uh, a higher R value 1.5. So we would recommend that you go with that. Yeah. We have a great picture here somewhere, but I can't find it anymore. Um, but we, uh, if you have any questions about Sarasorb, there is a study that we have done um, on this area. And here's the picture. This is the picture I love. Um, you can see here's an area with Sarasorb. Here's an area without it. Yeah. Same thickness, everything. Yeah. Um, it's three degrees warmer here. Here is the sunroom at your house. Mm. And we installed this area with Sarasorb and this area without. Yeah. And you can see the difference. There's four degrees difference. Um, and this is just after it's been running for a while. So after yeah. a few hours of operation, it'll actually be different. But you can actually see the results here of the difference between using it and not, not using, using it. it. And I'm going to tell you, you know, when you don't, install it with Sarasorb. Basically, we set the expectation with our customers that your heating ele element really becomes a chill chaser, right. it so takes to the, speak. It takes the chill, takes the off, chill the off, but will you get a warm, toasty uh, floor? Maybe if you leave it running after a certain period of time, but if you want it, to, if you want to set the expectation that it's going to warm up, it's going to warm up fast and it's going to be energy efficient, which is what we're all about. Spend the extra money, take the extra time, install this Aerosorb. Exactly. Yeah. So great question. All right. So let's move back to... Uh, our floor plans. Do you floor want to plans. talk about that? Because yeah, we, were, we were actually talking about the fact that we do a plan for every opportunity. The reason for that is it's, a, 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 it's an excellent tool to, uh, you can actually just click on one of those example projects. So you can see for a flex roll, we show you detailed instructions on where to start, where to begin, how many feet, how many inches you're traveling, what type of cut you're doing, mm -hmm. right? and where the control location is. Walk me through this one, if you don't mind, Scott. Here's a doorway, here's the thermostat. If you don't tell us where you want the thermostat, we'll assume you want it by the door where the light switches are. Yeah. So there's the T in a circle. And if you see this triangle, this triangle, um, there we go. Nice. 
This triangle represents the start and this square represents the end. And what we can see here is we take this roll, we roll it out, we cut the mesh, turn it without ever cutting the cable. We do the same cut again. And then we take some wire off of the mesh to get us to bit. this spot. And then we do a cut and turn to end up here in front of the toilet. So this is where we need to know, are there any floor vents in this room? Right. Because if there's any floor vent activity we need to worry about, we need to work our way around it. So that's why this is so important. We don't go under cabinets. The National Electric Code does not want you to do that. And we don't go under a toilet. Uh, you, When you're installing this product in a floor, the one thing you want to make sure in a bathroom is to never, ever get it too close to the wax ring. Okay. Because that would be bad. And we just, we take that into consideration. When we do our designs, we know where those uh, wax rings are. All right, let's take a moment and answer another question. Does the Cerasorb help uh, alleviate moisture issues if, uh, if your RH readings are in the high range in your slab? It is not a uh, moisture barrier to answer your question. So the moisture barrier would be put down on the slab first, first and then, then the Cerasorb on top of that. I hope that Great helps. Great question. Thanks, Linda. All right, so the role, as you can see, for this size project, we're looking at how many square feet here? Oops, I'm sorry. That's I'm okay. That's all right. We're right there. View example project. Beautiful. So uh, what role? We, we have a one and a half by 15 here. Okay, so you, as you can see, you've got one, two, three, four, five cuts. Mm -hmm. So here's what we're talking about in terms of making it fast, all right? right. Now, um, Let's move on and look at a cable floor plan because I think that will we'll, that'll do a good job of showing you the um, the level because this is the same size uh, area. So this gives you a general idea of the level of complexity or mm -hmm. labor that's required. So as you can see, you're really you have the same beginning. Uh, do you want to point to that? You have the yep. same beginning. Triangle. You have the same end. You have a thermostat location. But then what you're literally doing is you're running that heating element across that floor. And you don't have to guess either. We tell you how many inches to start away from this wall. I love that. How many inches away from this wall to run, how many inches away from this wall to run. Because if you take these runs and you make them one inch on each side, all of a sudden you're going to run out of cable at the end. Now, this is where you know we're the experts because... <laughs> you know, you need this information. Your installer needs this information. If you just say, oh, just, just run it over, you know, X number of feet. Well, from what? Right, right exactly. And the thing is, if, if there's nothing worse than getting, especially in a huge room, is getting to the end of that room and you've just installed 180 square feet and you get to the end and you have too much. Or, you're or too, you have too or you're little. Too little. You're right. short. Yeah. If you have too much, you cannot cut the cable. So you have to get that cable under the thin set or self-leveling. So we, we, we talk about this because of the Scott invention. So what you do is you put a dot on the cable that's halfway down. That way, when you get halfway through the floor, halfway through the cable, it should match up where the dot is on your plan. So there literally is a white dot on our cable product because of this gentleman and insisting that they we need a halfway mark. We need a reality check to make sure that we're on course. And the good thing is it also tells you on the cable itself, it tells you how many linear feet of cable are left. Yeah, I love that. So smart, very smart. And that's why we call it a smart plan. So let's go back to uh, those, uh, yeah, so tile marble stone. Use it forward. That sounds great. All right, so we've looked at the flex roll. Uh, let's look at the easy mat. So this is the one, uh, here's an example floor plan. And here, as you can see, if you have an, a small area, you can really just use one or two mats to cover the area quite simply. So yeah, the idea here is to use one or two mats because you don't want to make, you don't want to buy five or six easy mats and put it in your space because then you have five or six connections yeah, you have good. to make your thermostat. So you don't want that, but if you're doing one or two, that's no problem at all. You mm -hmm. can get that up the conduit that goes to your thermostat from the floor. So that's something you wanna look at too. Excellent. Now let's show the custom mat. Let's show the design layout that we, or the smart plan that we've done for the custom mat. Here. Yeah, perfect. And then just, yeah, we'll view that project. And as you can see, you know, one or two mats, depending on the size of the area, is going to cover it. Right. And it'll tell you how many amps or how many uh, 
what the cold lead length is. It'll tell you how many watts it is. It'll show you where MAT1 sits and where MAT2 sits. Mm -hmm. Also, these little wires here show us where the connection points are. And there is our thermostat. Beautiful. Love it. So those are the variety of products that we have for indoor heating, all the way from uh, tile stone applications to concrete applications. Mm -hmm. uh, and we also can put these products under wood flooring. Right. right? And there's a great video that shows how to do that. <laughs> of course. Uh, you nail it down. Uh, you, it, it, it's something we're not going to go into now, but there is a video about it. So once again, if you want to get into videos, they're right here. Yep. Uh, shows you exactly how to do that because hardwood floors need something to nail into. Mm -hmm. So you need to put what we call sleepers down on that subfloor. Well, what you do is you put the heating in between those sleepers, and then that will give you a warm floor and still allow you something to nail in mm -hmm. because you don't just want to lay cable out and start nailing willy-nilly, and then all of a sudden you don't have a floor any longer that works. Now, we do recommend for the most part that uh, you use engineered wood floor with electric floor heating um, because it's a more stable product uh, and uh, may not require usually does not require nailing. So um, if you're looking to do wood, we would direct you to that uh, direction. But if you had a, a wood species that you were absolutely uh, in love with, we can walk you through the pros and the cons and the install method. It's very, very, it's, 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 it's really starting to take off and it's nothing to be afraid of anymore. It's, yeah. it's really not that difficult to install. After you do one, you're an expert anyway. Right. And then the real issue with wood floor is one, humidity. Mm -hmm. So, and we're kind of out of uh, that, we're, we can't control that. But what we can control is the uh, temperature setting. So talk about that. Well, you know, el electric heat is kind of new for some people. So if they have a wood floor that all of a sudden it's gapping mm -hmm. or expanding and contracting, that sort of thing, it's because it really, um, the number one problem is not the heated floor. It's the relative humidity in the room. In the room, right. Uh, people with hardwood floors sometimes don't realize that you need to have a maximum of maybe 50 or 60 uh, percent humidity in the summer and at least 30 to 40 in the winter. Mm -hmm. If you don't have any way to get that water out of the air or to add the water into the air with a dehumidifier or a humidifier, you really shouldn't be putting in a hardwood floor anyway. Right. Because it needs to have controlled relative humidity. So that's the number one thing that people don't think about. They, they, they put the wood floor in there and it starts to gap or whatever. It's not because of the heat under it. It's because there's in the summer, in the wintertime, 20% relative humidity. And they, in, they installed it in the summertime when it was 80% humidity. Mm. So it's automatically going to do that without right. any heat mm. in it at all. So when you're thinking about a hardwood floor, always think about not only is it going to be warm, Think about how am I going to control the humidity in this space? Yeah. In the summer, I need to get it out. And in the winter, I need to add it in. Exactly. Let's go to floor heating and let's go to our thermostat page. So if you go to shop thermostats, I think that's a good uh, place for us to talk about the fact that you can control the temperature of the floor. And when you're doing wood, it's less important for tile, but when you're doing luxury vinyl tile, when you're doing laminate, when you're doing some type of wood, usually there is a recommendation for maximum floor temperature. Uh, and that temperature can be anywhere from 80 to 84 degrees. And with our most of our controls, you do have the ability to control the floor temperature or the ambient temperature. And I think you can even do, do both, a mixture, both a, a mixture of both. So right here, you can see the control options that are available for all of our floor heating products. Uh, the most popular is that Inspire Touch. People really like the ability to have a touch screen. Uh, and the Wi-Fi, of course, is gaining a great popularity because people want smart devices. Uh, the uh, touch series and the enhanced series all have floor thermostats. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, there. and then you can do setbacks. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the next thing I was going to talk about is these things here on the on the left side allow you to do setbacks. And setback is when no one's going to be at the house. There's no need to have the floor warm. So you can bring it down to 70 or 68 or whatever you want that to be. And then when someone's there in the morning and when they're there at night, you can have it warm up to 80 or whatever temperature you want it to be. Yeah. The thing is with hardwood and some LVTs and some other products like that that have a temperature limit, they don't want that radical 70 to 85, 70 to 85, constant, especially hardwood. Constant hardwood, temperature. Right. So hardwood, if you have a hardwood floor, as we talked about, it's really easy to heat. The only thing is you need to make sure that that temperature doesn't go from 80 to 60. It goes from 80 to 78. 
or or to 77. They usually have like a- or Just two, leave it on. Leave it on all the time. Leave or it on. The, a lot of them allow, you have to go up to a certain temperature at the most, and then you can only deviate from that temperature so many degrees. Follow your manufacturer's instructions. Exactly. Uh, this product right here yeah. does not have a setback. So this is the product where you would turn it on in the summertime, at, in the fall, you'd ramp it up two to three degrees every day until you get to the temperature you want your floor to be at, and then it stays there until you bring it back down in the So that time. would be a good solution this for a, solution. a wood, wood yeah. floor application. Which is kind of an interesting point is the least expensive thermostat is the best for the most expensive floors. <laughs> I love it. So go figure that out. Well, what I love about this uh, is some people think that they can just put their heating element, their floor warming on any control. And we always recommend that there is one, a control with a floor heating sensor mm -hmm. and two that you at least in each room have the if you're doing multiple rooms you have the floor heating on a thermostat for that room and the reason for that is because in your home you use your rooms very differently your master bathroom is used very differently than your kitchen very differently than your uh basement right right so this allows you to really make this an energy efficient solution because for my bathroom i only needed a few hours in the day the kitchen i'm in there a longer period of time because i like to eat mm -hmm. uh and that formal dining room gets used three times a year if i'm lucky in the basement the same thing yeah used twice a year thanksgiving and christmas yeah so that's one thing you want to look out for now because i'm the technical guy i've got a brain on the parade a little bit and say that when you do these things sometimes that your local code will require you to have a control or some sort of switch in that particular room anyway mm -hmm. so by doing a thermostat in every space you're going to be complying with code very easily yeah the second thing is we got a call from a guy a couple weeks ago who uh, bought one thermostat he put it in his living room and he used that thermostat to control the living room and his very small bathroom oh, in the my. hallway so I'll let you guess which room got really, really hot and yeah. which room was really, really cold. Yeah. It was the big space, lots of, 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 heat lots, loss. of lots of heat loss in that big room. That's where he put the thermostat. So that thermostat was always working, keeping that big room warm. Yeah. Well, now you've got a bathroom that's really tiny and all of a sudden it's on the same control and it's on all the time. Yeah. So that little tiny room with no heat loss is really, really hot. Hey, instant sauna. Yeah. Yeah, but that's it. that's what you have to think about is why thermostats, we suggest them in each space because you don't want a big space and a small space controlled on the same thermostat. Nice. And also you don't want to control a wood floor along with a tile floor. Yeah, very different. Because they're completely different animals. Yeah. So that's what you want to think about when you're getting a thermostat is I can accomplish a switch in every room. I can control the temperature in every room and I'm not heating rooms that I don't need to heat when I'm not using them. Yeah, perfect. Love that. That was brilliant, by the way. Thank you. You're welcome. So uh, we've talked about the indoor floor heating. We've talked about the plans, the smart plans that you use that for the installation. And there are control options. Uh, and I think, guys, I think that pretty much does it for indoor floor heating. Do we have any more questions out there? We didn't talk about oh, this product. We, we should. We should talk about our floating floors mm -hmm. and stretch in carpet. Yeah, definitely. It's it is not a, it's a less popular uh, application because this product uh, goes under carpet uh, and uh, laminates. Carpets anything in the US. that's anything that's floating mm -hmm. uh, versus tile, which most people are putting this uh, under tile floors. But there there is still a need for it, especially like for me. I have a, a, a movie room, little tiny little movie room, and I have carpet in there, and I want it. To, to be nice and warm when I'm down there. It's in my basement. Um, so I literally did that. I had my slab. I put my Sarasorb down like a like a good girl. And then I used uh, one of these Environ mats uh, to go right over that and under the carpet and put that to a thermostat. Didn't worry about setting it. I put it to a floor temperature, but didn't have to regulate the temperature because mine's carpet. So I didn't have to worry about an 82 degree limit. Uh, and that that worked out very, very well. Yeah, and it's a, it's a great way to heat those areas. You would not believe the number of times I bring up, we can heat this carpeting and they go, I didn't know you could heat carpet. Mm -hmm. In the in the US, you can put this product right between the, the uh, pad and the actual carpet surface. It's for things that float. Now you're going to be saying, I've got this great LVT that floats. And this is where the logic comes from all mm -hmm. the time. And people say, I've got a floating LVT I wanna use in Byron. 
Well, we need we know that with LVT, you need completely flat surface. It's more um, pliable than um, than laminate. Laminate is more uh, resilient. So that's where the disconnect is with this product in LVT. Mm -hmm. LVT cannot use this product. And that's the reason why. That's the logic behind that. Okay. Uh, any chance that we're going to be at the Builder Show uh, in two weeks? No, but we will be at KBiz. Uh, so um, I, I, you know, I wish we were going to be there, but we'll be in the same location. So come by and see us at KBiz. Uh, so the flex roll um, is uh, for it's for carpet floating uh, applications. The temp zone roll is for tile, stone, wood, concrete. LVT. LVT. So I think we've done a pretty good job of talking about the different applications. Mm -hmm. Of course, we'll also do a plan for any of these. Uh, let's move on, unless we have more questions, and let's talk quickly about snow. Nope. Melt. Oh, you were you, oh shower kit. That wasn't next. All right. Well, let's let's let's. <laughs> hey, I'm I'm adaptable. <laughs> so, so let's talk about shower waterproofing kits very quickly because mm -hmm. this is your baby, uh, and this is something new to us. Um, there is there was an um, we've been doing heat in the shower for quite a few years, so it kind of naturally lended itself to this product. So let's talk about that. Right. So um, we, we're just going to touch on it real quick that the new way we've got a message here from Olivia that uh, one of the things. Pass me the pen. The pen. Okay, pen. Uh, if you are still doing um, the showers the old-fashioned way, it can take anywhere from four days to two weeks to put a shower in the old-fashioned way. So um, what we want to do is we want to – we look at the simple way of putting things in. That's what we're always worried about. How can someone that's not really experienced do something that they think that they can handle? And one of these is the pre-assembled kits. Yeah, so I like it. These kits, you, you can actually install a shower in the morning as opposed to installing the shower in over four days. days, eight days, 12 Absolutely. days, whatever it is. And you can get the pitch right. Yes. You that's don't have to worry important. about doing mud work. You don't yeah. have to worry about getting the the hot mop and mopping all this stuff and all that that that's the old-fashioned way that's the way that takes days instead of hours and this actually consists of kit parts that you can get um the pre-pitched base the shower heating that's already shaped for that base the curbs and then all the waterproofing that you need to make sure your walls are waterproof instead of using um you know brush on stuff and that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's all installed with latex modified thin set. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing you're going to be setting your tiles with. You don't have to get out and go out and get a special adhesive for this, special nails, special fittings, special screws, all that other stuff that you see competitors do. Just think about, okay, I don't have any screws here to put in. I don't have any other stuff that I need to worry about. No special boards, no special um, plywood, plywood, no special waterproof um, uh, dry drywall. So this is really a product of the future and it's going to really, really cut your installation time. So you like it. I love it. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Um, let's take the, the last part of, uh, of our time together mm -hmm. and let's talk uh, about snow melting. I do want to get that in before everyone needs to kind of head in a different direction. But, and the reason for that is because, uh, we have seen a, huge increase in uh, interest in this product. Um, th in 2019, our sales increased by um, 63%. So, um, well, we've got a question real quick on the curbless shower. Is it possible to create curbless uh, showers with this kit? If not, maybe in the future. Well, just like any kit that has a prefabricated base, you're going to have to do a little relief in the subfloor. So you're going to have to measure your area that the pan's going to be. You're mm -hmm. going to take the subfloor out there. You're going to cut the um, the supports and you're going to just move it down Yeah. because that's the only way to get into the floor surface. And you'd have to do that if you're doing a mud bed anyway, yeah. you'd have to get down there. So what you have to do is you have to actually remove the subfloor in the area that you want to heat. You drop it down a little bit, just to know you measure the edges of your pan mm -hmm. and it needs to go down that far. That way it gets you directly into the, the shower. And this guy can walk you through it because 
he's actually kind of done a video on that. Yeah. So we have videos that show how to do that. Yeah. Um, and the video we did was a curbless shower. Exactly. So, and we also waterproof the, the thing with the curbless shower is if you want to do a curbless shower, there's a chance if your drain gets clogged, that the water goes out into your bathroom. That's why you want to do an entire, an entire waterproof bathroom. Yeah. And we have just the tools you need to do that too. And we can waterproof every wall by using our bands and our large membranes that you can put on. Now, let and me ask you this question because we did get this. Can we put the heating element in the wall, Scott? Can we put the heating element in the wall? That is not allowed by the National Electric Code. So um, they have their reasons. They don't tell us. But your local I know code. what it is because I sit on that committee. Uh, they're afraid that someone's going to nail into the wall and or a grab bar or something like and that. And then get electrocuted. That right. is the concern. And your local code may allow it, but uh, you'd have to ask, ask your local code official first. Yeah. So that's a great question. But yeah. the National Electric Code says no. Hmm. So um, let's uh, we'll take and pause just for a second. Did you do some mm -hmm. deep breathing? Yep. Okay. Let's move on to snow melt and de-icing. Uh, and again, the reason for this tremendous interest, we've seen opportunities increase uh, throughout the year. Usually we, we don't even get opportunities in the, in the winter months, but now uh, opportunities are coming in um, at all at all times, all seasons, um, and because warmer climates. Even you know, we just had a recent large opportunity in Tennessee. Even warmer climates uh, are starting to see the value in this because they want to prevent liability from slipping, falling. Go to a parking uh, garage, and yeah. a parking garage have those circular ramps that go up. To level by level. And if it's on the side where the snow comes in, mm -hmm. there's no way to get a shovel, a, a big snow removal truck up those circular units. Right. So what you do is you heat those circular ramps and that's the big job that we did in Tennessee. Yeah. Uh, so that is actually um, very, very, it's a safety thing, not right. just convenience, but it's also a safety thing. So let's talk about the snow melt product. There are some, there, there, there are some things that are similar. Mm -hmm. kind of looks the same. It's just a thicker cable because it's carrying 50 watts per square foot versus 12 to 15 watts per square foot. So you can see right there. It's like floor heating on steroids. Exactly. It's exactly the same idea. And so um, these also have controls. We also do floor plans for these products. Um, and you can see some, some of the projects right here, some of the images. We have guides online that can walk you through how to do a landing, how to do um, sidewalks, um, driveways. So we have a lot of guides. We have um, videos as well because uh, Scott, that's his expertise. Um, so... What's the one thing that you want to talk about when it relates to snow melting? Well, snow melting cables, because there's less involved in making the product, they're a little bit cheaper than mats. So, mm -hmm. uh, so the rolls, people go, okay, well, I want to save some money. I'm going to buy the, the loose cable and I'll mm -hmm. just do it myself. Okay. Be prepared for a very long installation time okay. because it, you literally have to string it back and forth and tie it to the rebar every foot or so to make sure it's held in place. Well, the good thing about the snow melting mats is the cables held in place already for you. Very nice. So if you take a look at that, the cables held in place at three inch spacing. Otherwise, if you use the cables, you're doing the three inch spacing yourself. Mm -hmm. So if you have a small area, it's not a really a big deal. Save some money and buy the cables. But if you're doing a driveway, take it from me. I've done it both ways and you will save days of installation time by using the rolls instead of the cables. So definitely your preferred uh, product, but is there a time when you absolutely should use a cable? When you are doing stairs. Okay, that makes sense. Stairs make it much easier to do with the cable. Mm -hmm. And also if you're doing retrofit, if you're actually putting cable in an, exact, in an existing asphalt or concrete area that you wanna add heat to, mm -hmm. but you don't wanna spend 30 or 40 grand to rip it all up, all you do is you cut grooves into that surface and then you put the cable in it and seal it up. Nice. Let's go and let's go to the explore area that we've we've kind of been visiting. Let's go back to that. And under the explore area, there you go. We have these design guides. So let's click on the design guides. And these take you through. I think anyone trying to get their head around how does this work, this is the place to start with the design guides because it's not like a a brochure or a sell sheet, you know, that gives you kind of top level information. This goes into it in detail, ideally step by step, 
with instructions, with visuals. Mm -hmm. um, and you were talking about the retrofit right there. So there's, you know, if you're, if you really want to, to uh, de-ice a driveway, but you're not redoing the asphalt uh, or the concrete, mm -hmm. uh, then we would walk you through how to do a retrofit. So that's possible, and that's usually a cable solution. Right, could be a uh, could be a roll solution, also depending on the size uh, of the area. The number right? one, yeah, the number one thing people um, obviously we deal with people who who are homeowners and they're exploring this and they mm -hmm. don't really know how it works. You know, I, I can I can give you a guess on how to get to the moon, but if you want to ask somebody that knows, you'd ask NASA or SpaceX or whoever. So some people actually know a little bit more and they can kind of guide you through that. And that's what we're for. A lot of people, when they're looking to put heat in their driveway, they think, oh, geez, I'm going to heat every square inch of my driveway. Right. Um, that takes a lot of power to do that. It really what, does. Now, remember, this is at 50 watts per square foot. Right. So. so what you do is you do this area here, which is where we did the tire tracks. Just the tire tracks. And that'll allow you to get in and out. And then if you have a spot, if you're at the top of a hill and your driveway goes all the way down to a road, it comes in a T to a road and you've had trouble stopping before you run into traffic, what you can do is you can do tire tracks until you get to the bottom mm -hmm. where you need the real safe operation. Then you can heat that whole area there. That's actually like a landing. Yeah. So what people do is they will like heat that. the area directly in front of their, of their um, garage. 12 feet deep by the width of the garage that gives them room to park the car and get out of the car. And then they'll do tire tracks the rest of the way out. Nice. So, so one, the first thing you have to understand is how much electricity mm -hmm. do you have? Right. How much is available? How, how many, many spaces are available in, in your uh, breaker box? Exactly. Uh, because uh, the electrician is going to be looking very closely at the amp draw for these products. Right. So I tell people that's the first thing you have to look at. Look at it from the electrical end. The second thing that drives the design element portion of it, because then you can decide, am I doing just the tire tracks? Am I doing an entire landing area that I'm more concerned about? Right. Or can I cover the entire sidewalk? You know, right. so first electrical, that leads to the design. Mm -hmm. Sound good? Yep. And I just had a really short video here um, where we can actually see this in operation because seeing is believing. So the left side is it's not heated, not heated. And this area is which area are you going to be driving in and out of? Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'm going to pick the side on the right yeah. because that's going to get me out safer and I don't have to go out there and shovel. Mm -hmm. So that kind of gives you an idea of how you can heat the whole area, no area or the, the part that you actually drive on the heated tire tracks. And again, we do the plan for you. Once we know the, you know, the service that you have, how much electricity you, you have, we'll work with you to get you the coverage that will at least keep you safe, mm -hmm. right? And then we can, from there, we can work with you on what control do, that you need, do you need? Because there's uh, everything from Wi-Fi to a manual timer. Right, exactly. And depending on who you are, uh, how much you want to be involved or not be involved, uh, what type of, uh, another thing is, you know, if you don't have enough electrical, maybe we can phase it in and out. With a zone controller. With zone right. controllers. So there's a variety of options there. And again, we can kind of walk you through everything from Wi-Fi to a manual timer uh, and even some tricks to kind of stretch, if you will, the amount of uh, electric coverage you coverage get, for, you get. For, for water amp. I like that. You said it better. So uh, there are a bunch of different ways to do that, but here's a, here's a stair and here's where we would use cable. Mm -hmm. um, that's a very easy installation. Um, then here's a ramp where you would do uh, mats attached to a rebar. And we get a lot of requests for ramps mm -hmm. and you've done a few. Yeah. this I did this ramp here. I did this driveway installation, did mm -hmm. this a retrofit. So there are obviously some areas that you want to heat quickly. You want to install quickly. You use the product on a roll. If you need to do intricate designs, that sort of thing, then you would do the loose cable like here and over here. All right. That's really well done. Mm -hmm. I think so. Okay. So any questions out there? Uh, because we've got this expert, uh, we're closing in on an hour. 
Um, but uh, we're here for you. This is personal. We really do like to interact with you. We want to know what your questions are. We also like to understand, you know, what do you want to see from us in the future? Right. So um, there's just one thing I want to talk about here real quick. Yeah, we don't have to go, go for each it. individual one. Yeah. But you can build your own quote here on this uh, for page. the floor heating yeah. oh, and the snow melting. Yeah. Um, you can uh, do a running cost calculator. People always ask, how much does this cost to run? They really do. And it, it is pennies. I hate to say pennies a day, but it is pennies yeah. a day. And also, will this act as the sole source of heating in this room? Yeah. So if you're doing indoor heat, will this actually work as the only source of heat? This calculator will help you determine the answer to that. Yeah. And those are the... the the reason I wanted to bring that up because those are the questions we get. All no, the that's great. That's great. It's good to know that those resources are there. So um, I think that's it. I mean, let's talk about the fact that we've got another. We we do this every month, mm -hmm. second Thursday of the month, uh, 1 p.m. Central Time. So we'll be back. Uh, and what are we going to be talking about next month? Um, let me see. That's going to be on one of these mystical pieces of paper. And I don't have the answer on this piece of paper. Olivia, what are we talking about next month? You can say it. You can go to the card right here. Ah. Thank you, Olivia. The next one, dun da da da. How to install a floor heating system in less than a day with floating floors. And how to answer a question in less than two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so join us. Uh, we'll be back to talk about that. We've got a sale going on with our Environ product uh, for under carpets. So um, if you can take advantage of that, we're going to send you out a survey. Uh, give us your feedback um, and tell us what you want to learn about next, and we'll actually do it. Yeah, and then the thing is also if there's something you're looking for information training-wise, we have daily trainings that happen on the website also. Yeah. So check that out. That's a good idea. All right, I think that's it, buddy. Mm -hmm. All right, so until next time. Stay warm and be radiant. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining us.